The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wild. 18 games. 18 games left for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I thought you were going to say gentlemen. I was gentlemen. getting really excited. 18 gentlemen left. 18, <laughs> 18. games. <laughs> I'm very excited. Are you? I'm very excited. Now, I, I had a look at the schedule this morning. At least eight of these games are against non-playoff teams that are expected to remain non-playoff teams. The reason I say only eight, some I've seen estimates as high as ten, but there are some teams that you're like, well, you could be in this day and in out in the next out the next day. So, yeah. bubble teams and playoff teams, I'm going to count in the same category. Non-playoff teams like Detroit. Uh, I mean, it's, I even counted Tampa, but really, Tampa's on the bubble. They're right there. Uh, but I'm th- like Detroit, Carolina, like you're out. You're out. But you're not easy, but you're out. Yeah. No one's easy. There's, there's, ha. you know, I was, <laughs> I hate to bring this up because we are starting on a positive note. The yeah. playoff push. So we all know all the games that where the Leafs left points on the table. Mm-hmm. We all know the games where they choked on a lead or they did something really stupid in the Steve final minute. Steve threw his phone. Steve, I threw my phone more than once. I, this phone survived this season so far. It's because you have an OtterBox case. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's nothing short of a miracle. Why are people so willing to throw around $1,000? Because that's what an iPhone costs. I'm a Leeds fan, man. <laughs> that's well, Steve's, why. Steve's also you know, a fancy man. Mm-hmm. And when you're a fancy man, yeah. you can do such I things. I have like as throw five more free ones at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, if this breaks, I'm screwed. I remember, which I makes remember it more when you did get a free it. Android phone and you switched yeah. to it, and then you were like, "You're like, no, guys, this is really great." <laughs> and then Jesse and I are like, "Sure, it is." And three months later, you got, got a free iPhone. Microsoft one too. <laughs> I, I think I'm going Pixel though. No, no, no you're guys. not. This, I think this I'm Android going phone, it's Dude, really good. Listen, no, listen, I was trying to make a point here. <laughs> We were talking about the easy. Sides I want to get the Google blue phone. The very blue phone from Google. The sides are Do they curved. Have those? Yeah, it's called really. Yeah, but the sides. <laughs> yeah, the sides are curved. The screen goes all the oh, way around. What? So if I'm ever, if I'm ever eye length for the table. Yeah. If I'm if I'm ever looking at it like this all the way down here. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get one of those it. sensors that you wear over your eyes from Dragon Ball Z, and then that'll be my phone, and then you'll be jealous. And then I'll be jealous. Maybe I, maybe then I would be jealous. Jealousy but, level no, over nine thousand. Yeah, there's a Google. Google really blue phone. Okay. Uh, it's called the really blue phone or something like, or the very blue phone that uh, <laughs> apparently is very good. But what, what always gets me about Android, and we're going to start a real fire here on our Reddit page, I know it, is that it's like, oh, but you could customize this. I don't want to customize. I want to plug it in. <laughs> I want it to work. Do my text messages, does my email, does Twitter work? That's, that's really the all I care about. The worst thing about an Android phone is that it's not an iPhone. You know, wow. See, I'm glad to be on your team, but but here's what's going to happen. Are you ready for this? People are going to come after me. Mm. You're going to be fine. No, all the Android you just said it. No, all the Android users are going to be like, "No, nah, Jesse's cool." You I think there should it. be a Reddit thread on why Adam's Android take is wrong. <laughs> Jesse's is perfectly fine, <laughs> even though Jesse presented really no 100%. take. <laughs> I would also take like to Jesse. point out, it a fact. <laughs> I was I trying to talk wrong. about hockey. I just wanted to point that out. Oh, do I have sweat stains? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's okay, it matters a little bit. We're on camera now. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Damn it. One of the games the Leafs left on the table. Can I just put this out? <laughs> Lest we offend the YouTube commenters. <laughs> Man, they're vicious. Those people can't get all, vicious. Yeah, no, all we have to do is no. breathe and YouTube's offended. <laughs> How dare you? Um, one of the games the Leafs left on the table, the mm-hmm. Leafs lost a game against the Colorado Avalanche. Oh. In, in regulation. Ooh. Now, they played great. Simeon Varlamov robbed them mm-hmm. from opening. Wasn't there like 42 shots for the Leafs that game? Oh, it was, it I ridiculous? think it was more. I think it was more. And they lost 3-1. One was an empty netter. but There are no easy ones. And I was going to say, well, except for Arizona and for Colorado. Oh, lost the Leafs, both. Leafs lost to both of those teams. Now, those are two games I, that you look back on. There's a lot of people out there not willing to give the Leafs credit for being the youngest team in the league. Paul Maurice <laughs> among them. Uh, but we'll get we'll get to that in a oh, second. You're referring to anybody? No, no, there's lots of people. I mean, there's lots well, of people who are like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. They got and, veterans. And whatever. also, they're but, not technically the youngest team, but they are. But shut up. To everyone saying they're not, <laughs> they shut are. shut up. <laughs> they're the youngest where it matters. They're top, what, three scorers? Yes. Come on. Come on, and, everybody. You and, know what we mean. And the thing is, is that with the current veteran core that they had, they were a consistent underperformer, bad team. Yeah. So, 
the veterans have been about what the veterans are. Nazem Kadri has really been the only one that's Kadri's taken legitimate steps forward in the last couple of years. But I don't think Tyler Bozak is any better or any worse. I don't think JVR is any better or any worse. See, I think I Bozak's think, in I a think, better role for him. Yes. But Bozak I, I, has, he was never the number one center. He just had to be. Bozak has at very least been Tyler Bozak. Yeah, which is great. Where's JVR? Hmm. Yeah. I haven't been giving him enough crap in my videos because it's not like he's making terrible mistakes. He's not there. He's invisible. He had like seven shots in one of the California games. And when they announced he got the seventh shot, I was like, w- really? They were all like sort he of chess, chess shots. And- I can remember one scoring chance. I want to say it was against the Ducks. That was decent. Where is this guy? He's gone. Why do you think that is? Because that's just what DVR does, man. Like, it's not a very thorough analysis of it all, but some games he's beastly. And other games, he's gone. Like, I, I wonder if goals are, like, his oxygen. Like, that was once said about Phil Kessel. Like, does JVR just need a stupid goal? Just a really dumb one? And then all of a sudden, that sparks a fire? Like, should Mitch Marner just, if he's on a breakaway, just pass it to <laughs> JVR, Blake Como style? <laughs> yeah. Like, on the Colorado, like, just get this guy going. Get him started. He needs to be better. Um, but to your point... It's not just the next 10 games. To me, the next three. Well, they got to run the table. And here's the thing. We got Detroit, we got Philadelphia, and we got Carolina. All teams on the outside looking in. I think if you get all six, beautiful. You literally can't do better than that. If you get five points, so you leave one point behind, all right, not the end of the world. I don't even think four is good enough. I don't think four is good enough. You need to take advantage of these games. And if you belong, you will. If you don't, you won't. And I guess we find out. It's as simple as that. We haven't been in this position in a very long time. It is it is fun, but it's also a little bit stressful. It's a it's little stressful. It's enormously stressful. The, uh, your team being decent is way more stressful than your team contending for last. So a lot has been made of Tampa Bay's resurgence, obviously, and, and Florida's as well. Um, but Which we call it. And Tampa Bay coming back, you know, catching up to the Leafs. Tampa Bay has really only bridged a three-point gap in the last six weeks. Yeah, that's and the Leafs have been terrible. And the Leafs have been terrible. They've the, lost five straight. Yeah, and that yeah. with the pity points, it's hard to zero. It's easy to lose track of. What that. is it? Zero three and two in their last five. Something like zero that. two and three. So they've got three points in their last five. Luckily, but I mean Jeez. that's that is just that's not good enough. And I also don't mm. think that's Leafs. I don't think that is this year's Leafs. I think it is. Yeah, a it's a it's a poorly timed. Uh, cold streak. Did you want to move on to some, something else? Because I want to have a long Leafs discussion here because we've been away for a few days. We had a really short episode last, no, I last of, time. We had lots of Leafs. Okay, great. Because Leafs Nation is a little sick right now. Leafs Twitter is... You guys are... You're losing it a little bit. Let, 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 me, let me help you guys. Let's let me talk. help you guys. You guys are talking about nonsense. You're talking about all the wrong stuff right now, okay? In the last few days, I've heard about how the defense needs a major overhaul. I've heard about how Matthews needs to be uh, ripped away from Zach Hyman. Oh, give me a break. Matt Martin is the reason they're losing games. I've, I've heard all these things. I'm sorry, but Matt Martin doesn't play enough for that to be the case. None of, them, none of these things are true. First of all, the most Matt Martin talk I've seen all season has come after the last three games. After Brian Boyle is inserted into the lineup, and the fourth line looks as good as it has all season, and in fact, in, in three straight it, losses, but arguably the best the three best games line. that that the four the fourth line has played and all they, year, and they might have been the most effective line in those games yeah. at times. Now, do, might have been. do I think it's fair that Josh Levo, after the performance he had, which I think was nine points in twelve games, something like that, do I think it's fair that Josh Levo was on the outside looking in? Absolutely not. It's not fair. He's, I think he's played his way into the lineup. And I look at the lineup and I go, who's the player I would least prefer to have there? Like, I look at the wingers. Probably Matt Martin. That being said, Babcock likes his toy. And Matt Martin hasn't been costing them games. So everyone, like, would would it improve the Leafs team? Maybe. Maybe. But I think you're zoning in on something that doesn't necessarily need to be zoned in on. Zach Hyman... With Austin Matthews, he's been there all year. Mm-hmm. All year, Zach Hyman's been there. So what does Matthews have? How many goals? 32? Something like that? Something's working. There. 
Thirty one. And I believe isn't he isn't he not is he not top three in the league in goals? Matthews? Matthews, he's up there. He's high. He's very high up like there. Not he, a lot of players have hit thirty. Like him and Line are among the top. Mm-hmm. Is, I don't think Zach Hyman's the problem. And the defense, yeah, the defense is porous. They've made a lot of dumb mistakes. They're also missing memory. Connor Carrick now. They're missing Connor Carrick. Yeah, that shouldn't that shouldn't sink you. And Marchenko, I don't think has been overly fourth bad. Fourth and goals in the league. He needs three more. He needs a hat trick tonight to tie Wendell Clark. Maybe you just get four. Hit him with the four, like Austin Matthews. That's, that would be right. like him. That would be like that is him. a great song, by the way. I, it's not, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but I like it. I, <laughs> it's a hate listen. Jesse introduced me to this term. It's a hate listen. It's a hate listen. Um, again, so mad. I was so mad after the California trip. But okay, who'd we get first? Sharks game, tied with ninety seconds left. Jake Gardner forgets. Everything. Literally everything. His, Which, brain, his brain goes for a walk. If there's anybody on the team that's going to do it. Oh my God. Just. It's just, him. In, in the words of a, of a former boss referring to me, I'm going to take a bat to this kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he said it out of love. He said it out of love. He knew I knew better and I know Jay Gardner knows better. LA Kings. What happened in that game? I'm trying to remember. Oh my God. Well, just, first of all, I just remember just, just general frustration. Uh, they go to the shootout. That was bad. Puck goes off Zaitsev, Zaitsev's face. What are you going to do? That's a fluke goal. That's a, That goal is an act of God. And then the game-tying goal, Marchenko lays an amazing hit, forgets Tanner Pearson exists. So I, that's a simple mistake and an act of God. And the sh- stupid shootout. And all of a sudden, if they win that shootout game, by the way, this isn't an emergency. I, I think we're talking about it differently. Well, they're, on, they're in the playoffs. Oh, they're in the playoff picture at that point. Or at very least tied for it. And then the Anaheim game, uh, I think it was a 4-2 loss with an empty netter, so 5-2. Mitch Marner missed a couple of assignments. I don't think it's a problem with chemistry. I don't think it's a problem with what the pairings are. I think it's a problem with simple mental mistakes. A team that badly needed to go home, mm-hmm. have a good night's sleep, eat a good meal. They didn't get into L.A. until 3 a.m. <laughs> have eh? a good practice. Dude, Brian like Boyle's dumb. first game against the Sharks, he got up before 5 in the morning Eastern and then played that game, which didn't end until almost 1 o'clock Eastern. Mm-hmm. That guy was up for almost 24 straight hours, and he still played. Eh, okay. His next game against L.A. was really good, I thought. He's a school bus, eh? Yeah, he's huge. I can't believe it. it it's yeah. noticeable. Mm-hmm. It's really noticeable. He's, like, there's sometimes yeah. where guys, you're like, all right, yeah, they talk about how he's big, but I, like, Getzlaff, you notice how big Getzlaff is. I looked at his, his cap friendly. I'm like, would I pay $2, $2 million for a fourth line center? And after three games, I'm like, yep, yep, here, take give my, my money. money. Ta- take it. Uh, I'd give him two and a half. Um, so, anyway, I'm not, uh, let me get to my point. I'm not trying to tell you the Leafs are amazing. I'm not even trying to tell you they're a playoff team. I am trying to tell you they're decent, and this isn't some crisis. Now, the Leafs can prove me right or wrong in these next three games. If they handle their business these next three games, which over the course of the season, if we look at their track record and what they've done, they should be able to. There's no problem. And there it is. That's what it is. Well, I I, I agree. I, I don't think. I mean, part of part of the the position the Leafs have left themselves in is that the, they don't hold all the cards, right? When you look at the playoff picture, well, it's going to depend on how other teams do as well. You need some help, but there's 18 games left. Absolutely, there's 36 Let's, points. Absolutely, left on the table. So, with that in mind, um, you know they 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 really need to they need to win 11 or 12 of those games. I think. 11 out of 12? 11 oh. or 12 oh. of those games to really securely put themselves in a spot. That is that not you, unreasonable. That puts you at 94 to 90, what is it, 92, 90? I don't know. 90 yeah, something. Don't, how dare you? Basically, the cutoff point they say is about 92. You need to, get, you need to shoot for 92 points at the bare minimum to get in. That's low, by the way. Like, as, as far as playoff thresholds go, that's low. The reason it could be low this year is the parity in the league, though. 
Right, and the division, and mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. For sure. I just, I, I think that there's a, this, this team has it. Mm-hmm. It felt like, on the California road trip, it felt like every time the Leafs scored, it was a gigantic, <sighs> and then you held your breath immediately after, and it felt like the team did too. Well, they only have five goals in those three games. And I was just going to say, it seems like right now, something that's come very easy to them, which... Or was it five or six? Doesn't what, matter. Not, not enough. Something that has come very easy to them isn't right now, which is goal scoring. Mm. It feels like it's climbing a mountain with them. And I wonder if that was their first rest, Western Road swing for a team with seven new forwards, rookie forwards, in the uh, in the lineup. Um, yeah, they, or if it's just, you know, the, something. Yeah, there, was, there, was not, there wasn't the kick that they normally have. Matthews was good. He wasn't great, I didn't think. Nylander, after just being monstrous for like a month, it took a little bit of a step back. Um, and again, JVR, just we need more. We need more, man. Well, especially from a leader. Especially from a leader. And and you know, for all the flack Matt Martin gets, I need more out of Leo, too. Like there's there's a veteran playing high up in the lineup, playing an important role. I need more. I need more. You just need more from everybody. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have been dumping on Riley, completely ignoring that he's coming back from injury. Dude, Ben Smith is getting surgery on his finger. Did, wow. did, did I read that? So no wonder he looked like crap. Yeah, he, he wasn't better. He broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah he finger. wasn't better. So, sorry, it was broken. Yeah, he broke his finger back in December, and now he's got to have surgery on it. So now he's officially allowed to have surgery because they actually have a replacement for yeah. him. <laughs> it's, ridiculous. it's ridiculous. And it was rough. five goals on the road trip. Five oh, goals, okay. Goals, yeah. yeah. So and that's I, not normal leaf play. I, yeah, I this also, isn't a crisis. This isn't a crisis. I've also read that their PDO and their shot percentage is down. PDO basically measures luck. Sort of. It measures, uh, it is your save percentage plus your shooting percentage. It is not a be all end all no. of luck, but if it's redonkulously high or redoncul- redonkulously low, um, you can usually bet on a correction coming. So if it's ridiculously low right now, Great. I don't know how ridiculously low it would be, but I do know their sh- save or their shot percentage mm. is pretty low. I would love to know what it is on the whole on the season as a whole. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, but anyway, it, it, you know, it, regardless of that, I think the Leafs are they're due to at least correct and come back to where they somewhere in the middle, if not go on a hot streak. Because remember, this is a team that really wants it. This is a team. This is a, these are players that really want it. You telling me these young players don't want to go to the playoffs and surprise everybody and put their fingers in the air like, ah, we did it. You know what I like to pay attention to is um, I try to imagine what the headline is going to be the next day mm. as the game goes. So a lot of a lot of them get erased. Brian Boyle winning a faceoff and Nikita Zaitsev scores a goal that got erased. That was about to be a headline. Freddie Anderson shutting out the LA Kings. Could have happened. It wasn't far off. Mm -hmm. The puck went off his visor, man. (laughs) Why? It was going high and wide. It was going nowhere near the net. This is what happens when these Europeans come in and they wear their visors. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Don Don was onto something. If it hit him in his face, his face is squishy (laughs) and it would have gone behind the net. These Russians... They, uh, Pitesov, whatever his name, he, he would have been, uh, they got to bench this Pitesov kid. Um, Leafs sit 10th in the league in PDO on the entire season at 1.004. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's not, so they are a luckier team, I guess, if yeah, you go by that scale. Average. Yeah, it is so close to average, so... I'm guessing their save percentage is a wee bit low, and it's their shooting percentage is a wee bit high. 92. There you go. 92%? Yes. Uh, well, 0. 0.092. Oh, Sorry. yeah. Here, wait, let me see. So, yeah. 9. Yeah. Okay. 92. Okay. Because when you say 9, two, I was like, 92 no, 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 no. It's 9. It's 9. It's 9%. It's, 9%. Yeah. it's displayed yeah. stupidly. Yeah, 0. Yeah, point, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, yes, it is. It is, it is. It is. zero nine two is the yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. It's displayed in that. <laughs> it's displayed no, It's a little yeah. different, Jesse. It's no, a little Same thing. Tell what me would, how I'm wrong. What would 92% what then me. be? Like, I need a stat site for morons like me. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't make it go through the extra filter of wait, uh, that's well, 9%. And I, and I have to be honest. I'm too dumb for that. As much I as I love time. as much as I love the advanced stats community, and I do, and I follow a bunch of them on Twitter, and, and, and I can't yeah. profess to be among them. I support it, but I can't because I don't understand how this happens or how this works. And the other thing is, when they're tweeting sometimes, I'm like, guys, you realize that 99% of the people, and my percentages are a little bit bad, but 10 to 70% of the people that follow you have no idea what you're talking about right now. One day, I turned my back, turned around, and every hockey stat started with an X. When did that happen? X goals, X... I I don't get it, guys, and I tap out. I know I sound like an old man screaming at a cloud, but I I need. This is one of those things I look up in the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I'm too well, busy having fun. I'm covering no. And the other thing I'm is, done. I think if you're if you're an advanced stats person, your goal is to get your message out there. No, that's the goal. No. That should be the goal. <laughs> it's, no, the it's, goal should yeah. be to get the message out you there. Know. To, Why to should prove they have to point? dumb down their message for dummies? Because the majority dumb, of, world, dumb, of the world are are dummies yeah. in comparison, the point and that's okay. Is to talk to the people who already know. Yeah. Any? No, you don't, you don't talk to the people no. who already know. You talk to the people who yeah, don't know. Don't wanna, explain it in terms no. that people will understand. That's why Einstein was a genius. Any he idiot, can explain things in, ter- in yes. normal people's terms. Any idiot can make something complicated. It takes a genius to make something simple. Yes. <sighs> I, I think that's a bastardization of the actual phrase. I like phrase, it. I'll attribute that I'm to you. Dumb. You can have and that. This has been established. Um, Nine two. So <laughs> I think they'll be fine. I now wanna... they could play, and again, this is the scary thing. They could play perfectly fine, be above five hundred, get those twelve wins that you were talking about there, Adam. Still miss. It is what it is, man. Can so I you pl- want to make the playoffs? Can I play some? Uh, 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 Toronto is the center of the universe talk for you. <laughs> uh, that hasn't been the opening segment so far? Uh, well, I mean, we are... A li- Listen, anybody has a problem with the fact that Steve Dangle podcast, Steve Dangle of Leaf fan reaction videos, has. if anybody has an issue with this being a Leaf-centric podcast, it's Leaf-centric podcast. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I was going through our uh, listenership over the last 30 days, uh-huh. and I think it was like half the cities in the top 50 were from Ontario, but there were a few surprises. Like what? Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. Oh. Um, in the was, top 50? It was number 50, but it was there. <laughs> That's still top 50. Um, I'll there take was it. one like in the top 20, top 25, and I have a feeling it's an error of some kind. It's a city in Arizona called surprise <laughs> no i i know of surprise yo the matthews family is that actually a place yeah a dude lives there who listens all the time he's gonna it's just be one guy. Know, he's gonna tweet us and he's gonna let us know that's uh, actually <laughs> surprise arizona has a long and storied history back in the u.s mexican war uh, and san francisco I, is also uh, i think i think san francisco might be top 10 that doesn't surprise me as much californians Shocks love their me. hockey it's where are you going to get your coverage from yeah. if you live in California? I was in San Francisco. If you want to hear college football, it's everywhere. I went yeah. in a hat store, and it's baseball and football and basketball hats as far as the eye can see. And then there's a little corner with like a couple ducks and sharks hats. <laughs> That's it. Wow. <laughs> That's all they got. And a couple kings hats. I am sort of surprised. San Jose is close to the Bay Area, right? You figure there would be a lot more shark stuff, and there's nothing. Well, but there's close to nothing. Why? Why did the NHL choose San Jose over San Francisco? That that's a history lesson. I'd like to go back and find that out. But that's interesting. You know, I, San Francisco doesn't even have a minor league team. The last team they had, and I don't even remember what league it was, was the San Francisco Spiders. That's a cool name. And they had a cool logo. At least too. they're look not at, the Wildcats. Yeah, the San Francisco <laughs> Wildcats. The Sourdoughs. <laughs> The Hills. The Golden Knights. The Broken Breaks. No, would they be the Francisco Golden Knights? The, you know <laughs> because what? Because they're not the Las Vegas Golden no, Knights. No, beca- because, yeah, no, I think they would be the San, like the city would be San, uh-huh. and their name would be Franciscans. Oh my God. San. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, man. Mm-hmm. That's how it would be. I want to hear some Toronto. Oh, the center of the Toronto universe. Toronto center of the universe I, talk. Comes from Adam you. has such a hard job. Comes to us. I don't. I, I've been throwing us off all day today. It's actually Your you job is to keep me on track, and I'm just like, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Monkey wrench. <laughs> Monkey wrench. Um, no, I, I want to talk to you about a former Toronto Maple Leafs coach 
who had some stuff to say. I believe we have almost enough of that injected into our lineup. And then the second, and then we're not as good defensively. So we have players that come in that weren't, that didn't get here because they have those great sticks, those great reads. Naturally, that has to be developed. And it's going to take time to develop that. The, uh, the next piece to that was I felt we chased games early and never built the right mindset into not chasing the game. So you got a good bunch of guys. The mistakes that I made, I did a, just a horrible job in relation to my my colleague Mike Babcock in selling our age and the mistakes. So when they've lost a game, it's a, just a wonderful uh, learning experience and they win. It's a triumph of character and we have the opposite thing going on here, right? So but that's my choice because I don't ever want to walk into a season and say we're not here to win the Stanley Cup. So just, I feel that way about this year. So we would get into games and chase those games a bit. So, yeah. So okay, here's here's what I get from that, and then yeah. I'm going to let you take sure, it. Sure. Okay. Sure, so sure. I'm I'm doing a bad job of spinning the games. My colleague Mike Babcock is doing a much better job of spinning yeah. spinning the Leafs wins and the Leafs losses. No. Um, and I should I should be better at that, but I'm not going to do that mm. because I I believe that every year should be a Stanley Cup year. Mm-hmm. So you're complaining about the way Mike Babcock spins a game in your words, mm-hmm. and then you're you're saying that you would never do that, even though somebody else should somehow have to pick up on that and pick up that story for you. Yeah. First of all, I don't get that. Yeah, heading into what I'm about to say, let's all remember that I went to bat heavily for Paul Maurice a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, second of all, it's going to be really hard for the Jets to make the playoffs without Paul Maurice because he's uh, out week to week with a shoulder injury from reaching around and patting himself on his back. <laughs> <laughs> second of all, or third of all, whatever one we're on, if I can quote Ricky X3, from Trailer Park actually. Boys. actually. X3, that's right. <laughs> XB. Uh, ah, that's right. Paul, Point XB. Mr. Maurice, not that I have the coaching experience that you do, but head in your own boat there, bud. Head in your own boat. You worry about the Jets, let Babcock worry about the Leafs. Because it'd be one thing if what you're saying is true, it would still be irrelevant because it doesn't help your Jets at all. Mm-hmm. But that is that is incorrect, Paul. That is a fallacy. And for as much as Toronto is the center of the universe, and gosh darn it, I wish Sportsnet and TSN and everyone else would stop covering the Leafs so much. For all the coverage of the Leafs, if you had read any of it, you would know that that's not true. Uh, that's not true. Babcock grills Leafs all the time. Grills Freddy. Grills Willie publicly. He grills guys all the time. For losses. Sits JVR for like an entire third period. Yeah, he benched a four plus million dollar player, bunched, uh, benched Who's a worth team probably seven. USA player, and, and not half. putting any pressure on Ten. on the Leafs. <laughs> Not not putting any pressure on on his young team. Well, gosh darn it, there, Paul. If you had paid attention to the World Cup, Mike Babcock actually has such a resume that he got the opportunity to be head coach at Team Canada. Uh, you may have heard of him. Um, there, he after Team Canada won that thing, that little tournament there, he said to the media, "This is just a sign of what's to come in Toronto." He said that on the biggest stage in hockey at the time before the season even began. So don't tell me he doesn't put pressure on the Leafs because that is wrong, and that is just you deflecting. Head in your own boat. Worry about your own race, which, by the way, is not related to the Leafs race. It's in the West. It might I also down, point out when when. Paul Maurice took over. Yeah, uh, and I actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out Jeff Blair for writing an article yeah. and and shouting was, this out. It was out. a very good article. A very, very yeah. good article on it. Good, good take on it. You should he check gets it out. Too much flack. Yeah, I like Jeff, Jeff Blair. Blair. Yeah, well, he's uh, honestly his his articles are so are a lot of fun to read. Mm-hmm. Um, you know why they they completely go every uh, go over people's heads. They yeah, because it's because they're it's very smart. Mm-hmm. What was the one the league should have rigged? The lottery so that the Leafs got McDavid. Do you know how many just un deeply unfunny people in Edmonton? <laughs> deeply in their core, in their soul, unfunny mm. people did not get that. Come on. But that's a fun article. <laughs> like, he, that's Jeff Je- Blair. Jeff must have been at home writing that article going, the comments on this are going to be great. <laughs> I, I don't can't even, wait. Here, here, no. Jeff doesn't put that much thought into it. Here, here's what his thought on that was. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so what he that thought. That specifically is so good because the argument is fair. 
for the health, <laughs> the health of the NHL, the best player should be in the biggest market. Absolutely. In, absolutely. In any league, LeBron should be playing in New York mm-hmm. for the health of the NBA. Furthermore, so, they should fold the Oilers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make money, fold, fold Edmonton. <laughs> so, it's genius to write that article. Like Blair, I love Jeff Blair. So, so here's, the, here's what Jeff Blair points out in his article. He's like, let's not forget that when you took over for Claude Noel in 2014-2015, you had already at your disposal. Mm-hmm. Dustin Bufflin, Blake Wheeler, Andrew Ladd, Mark Shifley, Nikolai Ehlers, Tyler Myers, and Brian Little. And that's before Babcock landed his best player this year, Austin Matthews. And let's not forget that last year, Winnipeg had much the same team. Pretty much the same team. Almost identical. And they were pretty bad, so they got the second best yeah. player in the draft, Patrick Laine, who's come in and had a definitely, I don't know whether he wins the Calder or not, but he's definitely number two if he doesn't. I'm calling it right now, he will. I'm calling I it actually right think now, he Patrick Laine will win the I think Calder. He I think he wins the Calder. You're both wrong. I don't think it matters, but I, 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 yeah, think, I, don't, I could actually I think care less. Wrong matters. No. <laughs> right. I could care less because Austin Matthews to me is the better player. I just feel like I and, and, and an overall player. I get it. I get it. We didn't have a Mark Shifley. Winnipeg had a Mark Shifley. Patrick Line, Mark Shifley worked beautifully together. I'm not even gonna give. I'm not even gonna like contextualize it. I think they're just gonna say, "Hey, there were there was a really good rookie crop this year, and we're gonna give it to the guy who has the most points." And that's fine because that's what happens most years yeah that's a okay say okay to me so i don't care so i i wonder here if i, I it's, you don't it's, have a goalie again paul that's what it is right like i mean it was like when <laughs> before montreal yeah. fired mark michelle yeah. terry and i said montreal seems to be really bad at diagnosing their own weaknesses however though no i don't think this is his fault though because it recently came out that the decision to demote pavlik at the beginning of the season was maurice He's like, I can't do it with this guy. So they went to Hutchison, who has been disappointing, and Hellebuck, who has made improvements. He's been pretty good. He's the only. He's the reason they have an even outside shot at a playoff spot right now. So we got to commend Maurice for that. But head in your own boat. Like I don't. I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Their the goaltending is not good enough to and make he, that comparison. And, and he, I, if he's not having those conversations publicly, he ought to be having them privately. I don't. It doesn't matter that Hellebuck might be good one day. He needs to be good next year because yeah. this team is coming into a window. They, or at least they should be. They have the talent. I, I'm still, I'm still hung up on what he said. Like, is he trying to say that the the, the Toronto Maple Leafs have less pressure on them than the <laughs> Winnipeg Jets? Like, I'm just again not to pull that card, but are you actually out of your mind? Especially as a guy Paul, who coached you here. coached here, you know, are you nuts? I I just I don't understand the comparison. I think that's I don't understand. I think there's a little bit of jealousy there. I think that's professional jealousy. <laughs> now, period. I, I End of story. Give, I want to give Paul Maurice the benefit of the doubt that that's not the way he meant it to come across, but that's the way it comes across. <coughs> That's a hundred percent the way I. I don't read know it. how he could. Here's the thing. Sometimes when you look at a situation like that, and you and you go, okay, um, here's how he meant it for it to come across, and here's how it came across, right? Yeah. Like it was like the Joe Trudeau thing when Sean Spicer uh, said uh, J- J- Trudeau, and they everybody was like, oh, he said just he said Joe Trudeau. He doesn't know who that is. Uh, obviously, in that particular case, he just made a mistake. All right, he just he flubbed a line. Who cares? One of a and consistent did, string of yes, mistakes. Yes, but that particular time, I think he knew Justin Trudeau's name. Right? So so we'll give him that one. I don't know what Paul Maurice was trying to say. If he wasn't trying to say what he said... He didn't flub a word. He flubbed a, a paragraph well, of, of yeah, and, yeah. And, and but what, If there is an alternate, if there is an alternate message there, what is it? And that's yeah. what I can't figure out. It, like He's trying to say there's no pressure on the Leafs to win the Stanley Cup this year. Because there Bob is, Talk's good at spinning. Yeah. Meanwhile, there is pressure on the... Obvious Stanley Cup favorite Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> Coming into the season, it was all we could talk about. <laughs> How the Winnipeg Jets were contenders for the playoffs, and therefore the Stanley Cup. What are you talking about, Paul? I don't get it. Also, I, I don't understand. Also, 
Obviously, your goal at the beginning of every season is to win the Stanley Cup. No, but, no, but, no, that's but not true. You know what? How about, about some realism? <laughs> like that'd be like the Florida Panthers, or not the Florida, the Arizona Coyotes coming in and going, "This is our year. Let's yeah. load up, kids. Like Let's do it. <laughs> Hansel, you're staying." Babcock friggin' comes to the season opening press conference wearing sweatpants, holding a beer with a half smoked dart. Go, you know, hasn't shaved in three days and going, you know, I don't uh, I don't really think we have a snowball's chance in hell at the playoffs, <laughs> little on the Stanley Cup. I don't know how you expect us to win a cup when we can't even make it to the thing where, you, you know, you used to qualify. Um, so, I don't know, maybe go talk about the Jets there. That's a pretty good team. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, if I had to pick a cup favorite right now, it'd probably be the Blackhawks. The Capitals and the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Paul? <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Uh, that was gobbledygook. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand what he was trying to say. And you know what? Paul Maurice should have some pressure on him. Yeah. to That team is good enough to be in the second round at least. That is a good, good to make the playoffs. That is a damn good hockey team. That I is way so. too much talent to not be in the playoffs. I don't think it's unreasonable to say they are expected to make the playoffs next year. They should good. have been expected to make it this year. Eh, I get it, though. They're going at it with a rookie goalie. I get it. Which is their effing problem. Yeah. That's the point. Get your goaltender sword. We talked about this when the Leafs didn't have I don't Anderson. Understand. I'm just... I'm like, I, 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 don't, I don't get... Okay, I understand development of a goaltender. Okay, I get that. But your backup goaltender is going to play between 35, 30 and 35 games. So you're Hutchison's telling me... it's not good enough. Well, but hell yeah, about that's enough. my point is it go get the goalie market is soft. That's James James thought. Reimer was a free agent right, from right. Manitoba. You could have brought him in and had him and Hellebuck. Reimer could have started 50, Hellebuck does 32, and then you're, there's your season. Like why Ben I Bishop was just traded. Ben Bishop was just traded. Yeah. Like I don't understand what, that. Third, fourth? Yeah. Something like that. You don't, you right. don't have that? What a bag? Oh, and or you can't like I mean maybe they go out and they sign Ryan Miller this offseason I don't know but the the for, the point is I don't think they I, I think you need to have a veteran presence in there because Hellebuck is clearly not the goalie yet so why not have a guy for another for another couple of years until you're like now Hellebuck's the guy we got we're good I, I think Maurice would listen to that part of the conversation at the very least and be like yeah <laughs> yeah that that makes sense to me that makes perfect sense and Chevy you know what he would say. <laughs> <laughs> what a useless general manager I mean <laughs> like that I, guy he, does nothing what was it that the there was a website <laughs> nothing there was a website a nation's website that did a uh, what was it a comparison Probably the, the Vancouver Nation. Canucks versus a potato in the draft <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it the Vancouver Canucks versus a potato in the potato no, draft it, it was oh. the Leafs wasn't it the Leafs versus no potato? it was the Canucks no, Canucks, Canucks versus Canucks. a potato no no so, okay sorry 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 so you're confusing two things. Pension Plan Puppets did Dave Nonus versus a potato. Oh, there we go. In okay. The summer. Uh huh. Okay. And the Canucks did. Canucks Army did um, the Canucks draft record versus Sham Sharon, which was their <laughs> robotic algorithm for drafting. Right. Which annihilated. Right. <laughs> annihilated the Canucks draft record. So maybe he looks at that and goes, "If I do nothing." If I do absolutely nothing, then at worst, I'm still better than m- half the general managers in the league. Oh, and he might be right. He might be right. Maybe. He's he's assembled quite the team. Maybe. Uh, anyway, so we got to take a break. We're like sure. long overdue. When we come back, we're going to talk about this Eric Fair to Vegas rumor that is very interesting in that it was a discussion that became a rumor and had no actual substantial <laughs> sources. <laughs> but we'll, we'll yeah, talk, hear more. We'll talk about, about that, that uh, when we come back on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. So, Jesse has something, Jesse and Steve, you guys have something that you found during the break. Yeah, Jesse was showing me something. So, he brought up on NHLTradeTracker.com, which I'm on, like, every day, um, the Jets' trading record, and therefore Kevin Cheveldayoff's trading record as Jets GM. Hasn't he made, like, two? So, we look at the first page, and the transactions go back to 2014, (laughs) and we're only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven transactions down. Yeah, so... I'm on this site, like I said, every day. They must be, I'd have to go through and confirm, they must be the only team in the entire league um, where you can look at the most recent transaction and a trade from 2014 
is still visible on the page. So we, I just picked the team out of the, uh, out of a hat. I go the Panthers. What's the most recent trade? So if you look at the exact same amount of time that went by, it's 2016 for the last seventh, year. seventh transaction. He you, doesn't yeah. make moves. You mean you mean the year that just finished two months ago? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't make moves. Um, like there are a few cities that, unfortunately, I'm sure they're nice places, but they're cursed with. It's difficult to bring free agents there. I think Winnipeg is one of those cities, one of those five or ten cities. They don't make trades. <laughs> they don't make it like Jesse. What are the what are the seven trades you can see? And, um, and read the dates. Do you want which order do you want to start with? Um, newest, newest, most recent. Drew Stafford for a conditional sixth round pick. That that's, was March first. That's a fine trade. You that's get a, a pick trade. for a player you weren't going to use. Good After for that, you. We jump to June twenty fourth. Of last year. Wow. 2016? 2016. So that's just before the draft. So, so, sorry, sorry. The last trade the Jets made was at the draft. Uh, yeah. So we go from March 1st. That was two days before I got engaged, by the way. <laughs> just so you know, I was in I was in London preparing to propose to my fiance. Oh my God. So we go from March 1st to June 24th. So that's when they nine acquired months. a first round pick and a third round pick from the Flyers for a first and a second. Great. Good trade. Mm-hmm. Great. So, wait, who did the Jets move up? Uh, the Jets moved up, yes. Who did they get? Uh, the Logan get? Stanley. They took 18th. Okay, and who did the Flyers get? Uh, German Rubstoff. Okay, interesting. Probably not from Germany. Just going to throw that out there. We don't know. <laughs> nah, That's not controversial, gonna, Adam. Okay, not uh, gonna Google what, what else it? we got, Jesse? <laughs> not going to Google it. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> let's, 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 not let's, important. Yeah, no, we're move, doing move through it. Move through it. <laughs> Uh, we jump from June 24th to February 25th. So probably they, around the trade deadline. Where they traded Marco Dano, a first-round pick. Oh, they acquired Marco Dano, a first-round pick, and a third-round pick for Andrew Ladd, Jay Harrison, Chicago. and Matt Frazier. Big deal. Yes. Big. That was good. That was a really good trade. Sure. Here's, here's something fun. We jump from February 25th, 2016, to March 1st, 2015. And that's the Evander Kane deal. No, that's Lee Stepniak, they acquired, <laughs> for Carl Klingberg. Is oh that when they were going God. to the playoffs? I, I, I think I they see. were going to the playoffs that year, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so that's a whole year? I, I, don't, I don't know. So we went almost a year in between moves. Yeah, I, th- I think you're... No, that was... What year did they make the playoffs? I, don't I think know. it was 2015. 2015, yeah. Oh, my God. After that, a few days before that, five days before that, they acquired Yuri Tolusti for a sixth and a third from the, from the Good trade. Good trade. Sure. Um... A couple weeks before that, they acquired Brendan Lemieux, uh, Drew Stafford, Tyler Myers, and a first for Zach Bogosian, Evander Kane. Um, so, yeah. Basically, Shovel Dayov makes an annual trade mm-hmm. that is on, big on alternating years. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and never for a goal. Come goalie. on. And then there are four transactions that happened in 2014. I wasn't even asking to make a trade. Sign James Reimer. <laughs> Sign anybody. Well, <laughs> you know, okay, I think I think the Panthers got to be given, and Reimer has to be given some credit for, that's a good match. It's a really good match. Reimer in Winnipeg's a good match too, man. Well, I think a Reimer-Hellebuck uh, tandem could have been interesting. Um, but you've, I, so many people have been like, you know, Reimer's a good goalie, but I don't see him as a true starter. He's a good goalie and not a true starter in Florida. It's a perfect situation for but, him. But would he not be the same when you're transitioning Connor Hellebuck? Well, it's one thing when your partner is Roberto Luongo, and yeah. it's another when it's rookie Connor Hellebuck. But you're coming home. <gasps> I don't your know. Your dirty money home coming to home. Be different. From, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good match, though. It is. It worked out well in Florida, and that's not to say Winnipeg didn't offer him something. It might actually be working out too well. <laughs> it might be working out too yeah. well. <laughs> Come on, James. Jesus. <laughs> Stop being so good, James. What are you doing? Um, yeah, poor Roberto's been in this situation before. Um, <laughs> oh, Eric, Eric Farrah to Las Vegas. So here's the deal. The word on the street, and this is how sensitive Leafs news is. And the this street is, is Twitter. Uh, the street is Twitter. <laughs> word on the tweet. Um, Nothing for that. Yeah, no. <laughs> there is a full-on piece of conjecture floating around out there that Whoa. originated on Hockey Central. Now, it is Ooh, Doug McLean and Nick oh. Kiprios okay. talking about 
why trying to figure out why the Leafs acquired Eric Fair, which I have to admit I'm a little perplexed by as well. Unless a fourth round pick is worth two million dollars in salary these days, which it might be. Yeah. And also, so. you got a good uh, you got a good relationship with Jim Rutherford. Maybe you're helping him out. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe there's something in the works down the road that you're working on. I don't know. I don't pretend to know what's going on. But basically, the idea is this: the discussion was. Um, the, you know, the rationale for taking Eric Ferry is that you can expose him, right? The Leafs had a bit of an issue with, who do you expose? Because we don't have anybody that's eligible, right? That's a problem, <laughs> yeah. which only the Leafs could have this year, right? I mean, certain good they didn't have this, the 70-40 rule or whatever it is. Eric Fair fits that. Mm. The other thing is, Eric Fair signed his contract, I believe, out of Washington to Pittsburgh, but played for George McPhee when George McPhee was the GM of the Washington yeah. Capitals. Yeah, yeah. He so he's 31 years old, probably not done. That's it? Yeah. Oh, come on. He's he's two million dollars. He apparently well he won a cup last year. Mm-hmm. So there's a guy if you're George McPhee and he's got one year left at two million bucks. That to me is an easy pick. Now the the conjecture part comes in, and this is again not Doug McLean or Nick Kiprios' fault, but this just shows you the way information travels. Now they said, well, I'm sure Lou, or they didn't say even I'm sure it was like, well, maybe Lou has a deal with George McPhee that that they're going to take him, and the Leafs will send another asset his way if he promises to take Eric Fair in the expansion draft. And maybe it's the fourth. Which maybe yeah. it's the fourth, and maybe and that's that's fair. Yeah. It's Eric Fair, you might say. Oh! Um, <laughs> you set yourself up. Uh, <laughs> t- Word on the tweet got nothing. <laughs> Come on. But, Trash. So it's a fair comment to make, but it is at this point just a hypothesis. Okay. Right? Oof, what a word. So then a piece is, is done by a Vegas... Hockey blog, which, by the way, already exists. Smart Insider Vegas. <laughs> Smart Insider. <laughs> and they say, you know, what are the chances that something like this could happen? And then, bang, it's a rumor. And then all the aggregating sites are all over it. Like, <laughs> like hockey rumors and trades. Oh. <laughs> Smart insider man. All the smart- only marks this as a sim four at the moment. So everyone needs to no no no. But, but calm sm- down. Smart insider man is hearing. Is hearing. He's been a little quiet. Since yes, he has been a little quiet. I think he's gone into hiding, looking for the truth. Well, sometimes the truth requires some digging. Especially- Any good journalist like smart insider man would know that. Now. <laughs> I, like I'm, I'm. So George McPhee, I assume, has his job because he is a smart man, um, <laughs> and he is on the inside. Yeah, he is, he sure is. <laughs> it's what counts. <laughs> do you want? Do you want Eric Fair or Josh Levo, or do you want Eric Fair or Alexi Marchenko, or do you want Eric Fair or Seth Griffith, or do you want Eric Fair or Connor Brown? Like one of those guys is going to be left exposed. I highly doubt it's Connor Brown. One of those guys is probably going to be left exposed. You want Eric Fair or Martin Marinson? You might answer Eric Fair to one or two of those. But for the most part, those are young pieces under 25 Mm -hmm. that you could probably use. Yeah. Or do you want this wily veteran guy who you trust and have a history with to guide what should be a young and, let's be honest, probably crappy team? Yeah, and I, I think in that particular case, why the heck not? Right. I mean, why wouldn't I mean, I, I get taking a Seth Griffith, I get taking a Marchenko or a, Mar- a Marinson or whatever. Um, but Eric Fair could be your and, and a, a lesser version of a Brian Boyle, your fourth line centerman who can who is just there, who, who you know, can win some face offs and, and plays a useful role. But really, at the end of the day, I mean, this guy played on a Stanley Cup winning team in Pittsburgh last year. Don't tell me he's not somewhat still useful. Mm-hmm. Let's pretend the deal ends up being something along the lines of the Leafs give Vegas... The fourth. The fourth Pittsburgh's fair. Yep. The Leafs... You know who the Leafs lost in the expansion draft? Frank Arado. That's who they lost. The trade was Frank Arado for Alexi, 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 that guy, um, Eric Fair, and a fourth. You lost Frank Arado. Would you take that? I'll take that. Okay, that's fine. I'll totally take that. That's fine. There'll be people among us who are like, no. <laughs> In the expansion draft. <laughs> now, here's here's what is going to be exhausting, and I can almost guarantee I'll be guilty of it when the time comes. Every 
blog, every insider, every whatever, everyone who covers any team in the league is going to write about how their team lost a player to Vegas, and it was a mistake to leave them exposed. What's the matter with you? You left Seth Griffith exposed? Are you out of your mind? How could you? Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. How could you lose that player? But two of those players on that list that I mentioned are waiver claims. How angry could you be? Asset management. If Mm -hmm. they lose Merchenko. Mm-hmm. How angry could you be if they lose Griffith? Especially if the Leafs are going to go out and get a defenseman this offseason, mm-hmm. which you think they will. Yeah, and I know I sound flippant, uh, you know, and blasé about the Leafs losing a player. Every team is going to lose a player, one player, okay? And for some of them, it might be a really, really good player, and for others, it'll be an AHL waiver claim type tweener. Who would you rather lose? The Leafs are in the best position, I think, of any NHL team or, you know, one of the top five positions. But they're still going to lose somebody mm-hmm. because everyone is. Every NHL team is going to be weaker after the expansion. Now, does does Vegas, do they make 23 selections for a roster or do they make a full 30? Uh, it'll I be 30. I think it's every team. Full yeah. 30. Well, that makes every sense because you got to fill out your, your organizational depth too, they right? They can have a max of 50 contracts. Oh, geez, plus a minor league team. Mm-hmm. And right now they got one. <laughs> they got one guy. A Duke becomes a knight oh, was the headline yesterday. was everywhere. Uh. <laughs> and if they sign Dwight King and have Ben Bishop, they'll have like close to a whole chess set. <laughs> That'd be would, cool. It would be cool. Isn't it sad that Dwight Qu- King is no longer a king? It's bullcrap is what it is. Is there anybody named Rook in the league? Ooh. Oh, if you are a Rook. Yeah. Whoever their first, over, like rooks. their first round pick, there's whoever no, that is. There's no queen. That'll be their Rook. Hmm. No queen. I'm trying to think of all the other chess pieces. I don't actually know how to play chess. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's. Because I'm not an old chess man at the park in uh, grade eight. Wow. We went, to the, we went to the chess tournament and our team won. Uh, I think it was one. We were one, one, and one in the prelims, and that did not qualify us for the playoffs. Unfortunately, uh, but we got a participation ribbon, and I won the one match for our team. Typical millennial. <laughs> I bet that's framed in your living room. Hey, uh, I guess Jesse's going to be out for four to six weeks with a shoulder injury for patting himself on the back on that one. <laughs> because, Jesse Paul Maurice Blake. How he carried his chest team. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Jesse sorry. was his chest team's Greg. <laughs> a king amongst pawns. <laughs> he, Jesse was, is. he was his chest team's Greg Jennings. <laughs> oh, I put the team on my right. back, though. <laughs> <laughs> Man. He broke his rook, <laughs> but puts a team on his back. No, <laughs> my fingers were broken. <laughs> Touchdown! Or I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. <laughs> Chess tournament, I would rather sew my eyelids to carpet. But <laughs> wow, <laughs> like, Jesus! I really would. <laughs> it's what a visual. <laughs> just I can see it. You can't. <laughs> oh my god. That's terrible. I just rather. Anyway, hey, we got to go uh, on Sportsnet 590, the fan. But in the offline portion, we got to talk about Joe Thurdman <laughs> and his 1,000th assist. Wow. Which thankfully did not happen against the Toronto Maple Leafs. It could have. And we need Very to talk well about it. If he was a decent player at all, it would have been his 1,000th goal. Am I right? Ah. <laughs> Everybody. Also, the GM meetings. They're, they're discussing some interesting things, but it'll probably lead to nothing because it's the GM meetings. Did you, did you see that Mark Berge, Bergevin uh, hit behind a plant? <laughs> yeah. He's pretty cute. And how cheeky uh, and playful that was? Wow. Let's Prager talk about that for 24 straight hours. Yeah, I think, I think what we need is that from 50 different angles. Everybody on their... I, I, please retweet that one more time and send it. Yeah, we, need, we need to talk about how, how he was covert getting some information. Smart insider man. I'm hearing it was a palm tree. That story is the definition of... Oh, 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 shut up! Dad jokes. You can download this podcast at sportsnet.ca or any place podcasts are found, like uh, iTunes or Podstitcher. Um, hey, or it's brought Google to Play. it's brought to you by that too. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. It's what's on the inside that counts. God, that Mark that Mark is such a scamp. It's ah. like it's like where'd he go? <laughs> I, He's behind the plants. And oh, Mark, who knew that plants could walk like that and have such nice jeans? Oh my! Who knew? That the GMs could be so funny. 
Did that wait? Hold on. Is that an Oddish? Oh no, that's Mark Bergevin. Oh, <laughs> oh. I thought it was a vial plume. <laughs> There's the guy who tried to peek into your mouth. Ah, oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh, the stuff. Uh, I don't know the number. Who no, has... no, here, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. No, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, ahead Steve. I, I wanted to say what traitors, what absolute traitors to entertainment the people who got upset at Colby Armstrong and Ryan Whitney are. For uh, their comments about Ryan Smith. Did you what see did they say? That? No, I missed no. that. Okay, so <laughs> right. a clip went out there without any context at all. Because what, context context yeah. has, has basically ceased to exist yeah. in the internet age. And again, Oilers fans, like, I'm trying to work with you guys. I'm trying to work with you, but you were wrong on this one, okay? You were wrong. So here's what happened. Um, Jeff Merrick goes, oh, you know what it was? It was... The Carey Price, it was the Canadians Predators game, PK Subban's return. Carey Price is having a drink of water at his bench, right next to PK Subban, and he squirts a little squirt of water over his shoulder at PK, and they share a laugh. And isn't that, isn't that, oh, it's pretty funny. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It is just a step above Mark Bergevin hiding behind a plant. It's right. not that funny, but it is worth. Capturing on camera and sharing with the public. That's about it. Okay. Do you now? Now I have the clip. Oh, do you, do you want to introduce now the clip? Do you have part of the clip? I have fifty-five seconds. That's got to be enough, yeah. right? That's got to be the clip. It's on Oilers Nation. I, you know, a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> Oilers Nation needs to wear this. Sportsnet mocks Ryan Oil, Smith. Oilers Nation. <laughs> that oh my god! It, by the way, Matt Anderson, nice, wrong nice headline. One. That is like that is literally akin to going. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what could offend Canadians more than Sportsnet mocks Ryan Smith. Like who wrote this? Matt Henderson is his name. Man takes Matt, dump on wrong. Gretzky. Yeah. I like, I like <laughs> Justin Bieber wipes ass with Oilers logo. That's what he wrote. That's that's the only more inflammatory. Like, literally, that's the most, the worst you could do. So here's what happens. Jeff Merrick, who has just been, again, ludicrous in the early 2000s, banger after banger after banger. He had a great trade deadline, and I thought he and Colby and Ryan Whitney were great during this game, okay? So Merrick goes, what's the greatest on-ice prank that you were ever part of, okay? And so what, what could Colby have talked about? Oh, one time we taped someone's skates. Oh, one time there was a rookie on our team and we made him do a lap in front of... I remember oh, that and it was bad. Oh it was my really goodness. bad. How, how utterly embarrassing that thing that has happened no less than 3,500 times... It's boring. You know why? It's boring. Because none of, the, none of the stories are repeatable on the air. Exactly. <laughs> so Colby repeated one and it wasn't that bad. So Ryan Smith is on the Oilers forever. Oilers hero Ryan Smith. I have nothing against that. I think you mean Islanders legend Ryan Smith. Well, then he gets traded to the Islanders. And he has that press conference. Yeah. Where he talks about if we win the Stanley Cup, we're going to bring it back to Edmonton. And that's fine. It was an emotional moment. Yeah. It's fine that Ryan Smith cried. It's fine. He earned it. And he also earned the trade. You know, he wanted to go to a contender. Okay, fine. And the Oilers got a good haul. It's not Oilers fans' fault or the Islanders' fault that the Oilers didn't do anything with the sea of picks that they were given in that trade. Um, so then, Islanders, you know, it doesn't work out. Uh, next season, Ryan Smith signs with the Colorado Avalanche. Mm-hmm. Colby Armstrong is on the Atlanta Thrashers. And I guess he's on the bench at this time. Ryan Smith lines up for a faceoff next to the Thrashers' bench. And the way Colby tells the story is... Do you want me to play it? And that's where it picks up. Okay. I, I, only if you want me to play it. No, no, because now I have provided context to the clip. Yeah. Right, so, right, so he leaves and goes from Edmonton to the Islanders the year before. I'm with Atlanta, now play him the next year. He's in Colorado. Yeah. And we're all sitting on the bench, and he lines up for the faceoff in front of us, and all whole bench at the same time. <laughs> oh... <laughs> 16 guys. We're making it. Oh, that's pretty funny, actually. And then the one guy goes, We're bringing the cup back. 
back to Edmonton. No, oh, that's relentless. This is the uh, video that Colby was referencing in the trade deadline 207. And win that cup so I can bring it down here in Edmonton. That's where my heart is. Bring the cup back to, to what do you think? Dennis Potvin and Billy Smith were still there? The Islanders are gonna win the cup. I told both of them wouldn't do this. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> I know he shouldn't have told the story about it. It it's is fun. Okay, that's that's in just game, them breaking him. What's the problem? Church. And also we I, Jesse and Post Prod, can we can we can yes. we boost the volume yes, on that? Yes, Thank yes, you. Yes. It's a chirp. It's a it's a chirp. Between hockey guys. Between hockey guys, and it, it wasn't inappropriate. It wasn't the and the clip starts with Colby basically just going, <laughs> making fun of Ryan Arms, uh, Ryan Smith mm-hmm. with no context at all. And how dare they out of nowhere? And I think part of this comes from the Oilers got Ryan Whitney. It didn't really work out. He was kind of injured at the time. And then he threw. And by the way, the insult that Whitney threw was against the Islanders. Yeah. Not it against, wasn't the against the Oilers. Wrong blue and orange team, Oilers fans. And wasn't making fun of yours. He was making fun of the Islanders, and he was right to because they made a huge acquisition at the deadline. Ryan Smith. And barely and made the playoffs. I don't, yeah. I don't think they even won around. We should give Matt Henderson credit who called this in the article. And I quote Okay. This isn't funny. This is one of the most singularly painful days in Euler history over the last 25 years. <laughs> I think he. I think he's got a sense of humor about End it. Quote. I think he's writing that. I, I, I think he's writing that with a tongue in cheek. That's good. I no, think he's you writing. Know what? T- That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. And I, are we going sure? to say? Give I Matt like credit. this guy. I follow him all the time. He seems to have a sense of humor. I think he's got a sense of humor what about this. Hell? But that's why I think he wrote the headline. But I okay, think he. I think hilarious. Matt. I think Matt that's also hilarious. knows. That Matt also was like Jeff Blair. We were talking about earlier. Matt knows that. Um, that he, the comments are going to roll in. Do you want a little more from the article? I would love, I would love it. At least we know where we stand with Sportsnet. Your most most painful memories serve as nothing but the punchline of jokes made by former players who are too unqualified to do anything else in their lives but relive the glory of openly mocking players who they could only have called their peers by reasons of technicality. So Matt, Matt is definitely writing this tongue in cheek. <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know, dude. Here's he has why, to be. No, he's kidding. I don't know. He's kidding. He's kidding. I think he's kidding because he's kidding. He's he's a funny guy. But so many tweets that I saw that night were not were that, but serious. They were mad. They maybe were maybe so Oilers fans mad. forgot you were a punchline. Your team was a punchline, just like our team was a punchline for 15 years. The punchline well, 10 years. wasn't the Oilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the best part. It's Ryan. It's Ryan. It's the Islanders are bad. How could they? <laughs> I promised Hork I wouldn't do this. How could they? Think of all the amazing... You hear... So, I promised Hork I wouldn't do this. It's so fucking funny. That is a very good line. You know what that is? That is... Whitney mocking his own <laughs> shitty Oilers team that he was on that was captained by Sean Horkoff. <laughs> Comparing Sean Horkoff to Mark Messier. That's the punchline. Yeah. I think, by the way, uh, funny another funny uh, Flames Oilers moment. When I was living in Calgary, I think they re-sh- re-signed Sean Horkoff yeah. to a two-year $10 million contract at Edmonton. And the Calgary social media person... I oh, the flame! Oh, I tweeted. <laughs> All of a sudden, you see come up on the Flames Twitter. What an idiot! Like, <laughs> how stupid yeah. are the Oilers? And it was like, it was so <laughs> great because he obviously was not logged into his own yeah. Twitter account. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and comes up on the Flames Twitter, idiots. As long as long as we're playing this game of abandoning all entertainment and humor, uh, um, Armstrong and Whitney had their careers cut short by injury, and how dare you! Make fun of the fact that they're retired players. How, how dare you? How dare you? They would still be playing right now if it weren't for their injuries. And frankly, I demand an apology. Actually, <laughs> I demand. I think Anderson's kidding on this one. He has to. I be. think he's kidding. Uh, a lot of fans weren't, and to them, I would say, "Fucking relax." <laughs> Have you ever laughed? You know, I Have gotta you be ever fair. Laughed once. Be fair to Oilers fans, though. They're usually pretty good about it. Mm, you know what? Of all the fan bases, I've, I've always found them pretty reasonable. And I think it's because take Oilers, a punch, eh? Oilers and Leafs yeah. fans can take a punch. Some yeah. Leafs fans cannot. and I'll, I'll Some Oilers fans cannot. Yeah. Some fans of every fan base cannot. But Oilers On fans... On the whole, they're pretty have, good. They've, 
There, I mean, for the, a fan base that's so accustomed to dark humor, I was just a little, I was surprised, a little shocked. Well, it, and it goes back to the Jeff Blair, um, the the <laughs> Jeff Blair article about Connor McDavid. If 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 the league were if, <laughs> if, if, if the leagues were if the league was smart, because if the league was smart, here's how the last two drafts would have gone. Yeah. Connor McDavid would be a Toronto Maple Leaf, and Austin Matthews would be a Coyote. We should yep. be thanking 100%. the Oilers. That's, that's, exi- that's how yeah. it should if have you gone. Could rig it, that's how it would go. We should be thanking the Oilers for confirming forever that the drafts are not rigged. Because <laughs> imagine, imagine the conspiracy pieces had Connor McDavid become a oh, Toronto Maple Leaf. Oh my dear God! But <laughs> he went to like. I'm sure if you live in Edmonton, you could admit that that's the worst case scenario for the NHL. Yeah, he could have gone to Toronto, which would have been incredible. He could have gone to Buffalo. Which is an, an enormous market. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Edmonton. I don't know if <laughs> like, Buffalo is a bigger market than Edmonton, though. Uh, it's in terms of TV markets in the states, it's one of the biggest. For what the NHL yeah, wants to do. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you would be David strengthening. Would be huge. You would be fortifying a stronghold. But yeah. they only got Jack Eichel, you guys. Oh. I know. Who comes it back from injury is a freaking unreal. I'm just yeah, gonna say, yeah, unreal. Yeah. He's anyway. Oilers fans, like, okay, what do you want? Do you want? Do you want here? Tell me a time where you squirted water at someone. Tell me a time where you hid behind a plant. Or do you want to hear a hilarious chirp that actually didn't involve any words? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, it's not like friggin' uh uh Duncan Keith going wakey wakey Bacchus and friggin' David Bacchus being unconscious <laughs> on the ice. They literally just went. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think that's pretty funny. Come on, that's bullying, Steve. And did that conversation? You're right. <laughs> did that happen on trade deadline day, like uh, during the coverage? No, no. It was that was during the Canadians Preds game, and oh, the okay. context was Carey Price had just squirted water at PK Subban, and okay. Colby, tell tell the time where you did something cheeky like that. Hey, guess what? Oilers next game mm-hmm. against the New York Islanders tonight. Oh wow. Oh. Uh-oh. The the Ryan uh, Smith Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> the Blue and Orange Bowl. Here we go. The inexplicably missing some of their bottom teeth bowl. Yeah, there you go. And, and we'll throw in the Oklahoma City Barons and the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, and we'll just have a big old party of blue and orange, and it'll be crazy. And everyone, the Ryan Smith Bowl. The Ryan Smith Bowl. It has to be the Ryan Smith Bowl and every the time they play now. Will be full of Ryan Smith jerseys <laughs> and Ben Andres jerseys <laughs> and Ryan Hamilton jerseys, <laughs> and everyone will just go crazy. There's some Scrivezina jerseys. Oh, I'm sure there's some Scrivezina in there. Better be some Scrivezina. Oh my like, god! And then Ryan Whitney later, after the Ryan Smith part was done, told a story about squirting water that was actually kind of funny. He's making fun of Ryan Malone and how, like, basically unfunny he was, and he would always squirt him with water, and he'd be like, ah, guy again, Whitney, with his raspy Jack Nicholson voice. You have to hear the segment. I'm bastardizing it. It was funny. It's funny. Like, I, you know our show. I'm dying for more shows to be funny. Yes. And, it, like, incorporate humor into hockey. And they try, and everyone goes, how, how dare you? You <laughs> well, son of a bitch. <laughs> You made fun of Ryan Smith, you piece of shit. This is the worst day in Oilers franchise history. Oh my god! In the last twenty-five years, oh my god! You rat bastard. That's worse than Messier leaving. Oh, apparently, yeah. oh. um, I can Very I? True. I promise, Hork, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> that's like, a great line. Are you? That's not funny. Oh my that's god! That's hilarious. Ah, uh, even Chill. even Canuck Chill. fans would like that. Horkov probably finds that funny. Like, are those the Canuck same fans? people? Who don't want anybody to wear number 66? Oh! Those are the same ah! people, right? Those are the exact same people. Here's here's the thing. I, I got I had a, a passionate Penguins fan reach out. A passionate Penguins fan Leia. who picked a peck of pickled peppers. Um, Peter, Piper, pick a <laughs> um, That's what man was saying. No, and I I get I get the I get why Penguins fans are upset about it. I do. No, I don't. I, okay. okay, Jesse doesn't. If you're going to be upset about... It's weird. He's usually so willing to compromise. Yeah, really. <laughs> Jesse, hey, what's the what's the website where you can look up who's worn what number? No, oh, I don't know. Google. There is that website. NHL numbers. Look that up. Oh, wait, maybe don't do that. 
so here we go. We got okay. So so the the context of the story, if you if you haven't heard it yet, is Josh Hosang, who has. Uh, been no stranger to controversy in his young career was sent home from Islanders camp I believe it was last season just for showing up late yeah, and the they sent him back the to the stairs. CHL and that like we had a long conversation about it. yeah and he's come up and he's earned his way into the NHL and they said what number do you want to wear and he said 66 <gasps> now what Mario Lemieux to, to my understanding has never played for anybody other than the Penguins no. Um, uh, yeah, just the thing. And I have 66 up if you want to. No, I don't, I don't want 66. Oh, oh okay. I want the number four. All right. Can you look up the number four? I will. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Which, by the way, no one gives a shit if you wear the number four. Yeah. My point. Fine players. All right. Who's wearing number four right now? Currently. All right. Let's find. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I have to find. It's okay. I don't know how many players currently wear number four. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm. I want to know. I don't think there are any. Oh, okay, well, recently that Michael Delzato wore it in 2014. Okay. Oh, Brendan Dillon currently wears it for the San Jose Sharks. How fucking dare he? Uh, Ryan Ellis currently wears it for the Nashville Predators. Do, do, do. Cam a, Fowler currently wears it wow. for the Ducks. Well, so there's, Cam, Cam Fowler thinks he's Bobby is that four? Carl Gunnarsson so, for the Blues. Is that five players? Josh Georges. Six players. Sabres. Josh Georges is Bobby Orr, apparently. Josh Orges. Okay, now I want you to look up number nine. Number nine, all right. Give me a second. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, Adam, what are you doing? <laughs> what is this Pandora's box that you're opening? How could you? <laughs> Let me find some current guys. Oh my goodness. That's Nicholas Jesse's searching Hagman voice. Or number nine for the Leafs, I think. Nicholas. Uh, is he, he's not Andrew, even one eleventh of Gretzky. <laughs> Andrew Kopp currently wears it for the Stanley Cup contending. More Winnipeg. like Andrew Piece of Shit. How Winnipeg dare he wear that number? Andrew Kopp. Andrew Kopp. Okay. For the Winnipeg Jets. Matt Duchesne. Colorado Avalanche. Bag of ass. How dare you? <laughs> uh, More like Matt. Easy joke. That's all I got right so now. So here's my question. My okay. question is this: If you're going to get upset about 66, yeah. why Evander are you not? Kane? Why are you what? From number nine, Evander Kane. Evander Kane. Why are you not upset about all of the people <laughs> wearing number four, all of the people wearing number nine, all of the people wearing whatever number you want? Okay, so the three best players I think we can agree in NHL history, four maybe. Two of them wore number nine: Richard and Howe. Yep. Bobby Orr, number four. Gretzky, Lemieux, 99 and 66. If you are upset about Lemieux, mm-hmm. you must also be upset about those numbers, which you're not. Because nobody is. Well, now, some here's, people were like, now they should all be retired. And here's the question. Well, they're not. Tisn't. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they shouldn't. Um, here's the thing. You, you, you retire Gretzky league-wide because his numbers are goofy. Because he is number one. And I don't care. You could debate me to the ends of the earth. And I'm not even going to get into this debate with people. Wayne Gretzky is the best player to ever play hockey. I'll go as far as say Gretzky's number should not be retired. Okay. I'll go as far to say because I don't I don't fully believe in the number retirement thing to begin with. Mm-hmm. I get the honoring the number. Yeah. I I I don't like. There's only 99 numbers, right? Is like, why, number, why are we retiring these? Is but, there any number retired league wide in the NBA? Uh, Michael Jordan's 23, except you can be grandfathered in. So, like currently, LeBron James wears number 23. So, so like, did he have? It happened recently. Jordan's blessing. No, it just no. happened recently no. that they yeah. retired it. Oh, uh, yeah. Not forty five. No. I had a Michael Jordan forty five Bulls jersey. <laughs> I just want you to know that. It's nowhere forty five. That's when he came back and yeah. played from the from the White Sox. So that kind of destroys my argument because I thought there wasn't one in basketball. Baseball, the only one I can think of is Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. And they have a day where everybody wears forty two. Exactly. Yeah. Like, okay, but Gretzky but that wait a second. Points. You're saying they have a day where they all disrespect Jackie Robinson by wearing 42. <laughs> <laughs> My point is this: I don't want to mock people and, and, and their passion, especially Leah, because she was totally, she was totally, totally. Um, she was straightforward about why she was mad about it. I get it. Mary Lemieux is a god in Pittsburgh. Totally, he's a god. There and, and, is a legitimate argument, and I've had this discussion with many people. Best player of all time. Absolutely, a legitimate argument. Legitimate argument. I would still say Gretzky. Uh, but Lemieux is literally a hair below at number two. Now, some of that some of that has to do with luck and 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 injuries, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now, yeah. I want to dude, dude beat cancer. <laughs> yeah, and came back and destroyed. Yeah, was the best player beat cancer? Came back was the best player. <laughs> yeah, like, he's that's unbelievable. unbelievable. What I want to say to to Pittsburgh fans that are upset about this is, isn't it great that your life? is so great that this is something that you're actually upset about. Because here's the thing. 
at the end of the day, it's a number. It's a number. And it is, it, it, in, in Pittsburgh, if Josh Hosang was wearing that number for the Penguins, yeah. I get that a little bit more than Josh Hosang wearing it for the Islanders. Yeah. Well, I, think the, I think the thing is Josh Hosang already has a target on his back. People already aren't sure about his character. And rightfully so. He's done some questionable shit. So, so people are like, don't sully the 66. Well, you know what? He's wearing it as a tribute to Mario Lemieux. If that is his number, then just leave it. And I'll if Mario- go as far to this. I'll go as far to say this. Josh Hosang, for all the shit he's been through, has earned this opportunity to be in the National Hockey League. You never know. You may never get called up again. You know? Where are, you this, this where are the be, number you want? This may be your only stint. And this experience has been sullied for him. It's been a little bit tainted because of this shit. This, but this, that's his fault, yeah, Steve. But this what twenty-one-year-old kid? He's twenty-one. Because we can't get over the fact that he wore a I, number. That, but I respect. Listen, I respect the passion. I disagree with the too, argument, but, but I respect the passion. Chill, chill. I respect it. I think this is like the third or fourth straight show we brought it up. I, I, and no, it's the second. Each, every time. Hey, hey. Question for you, Jesse. Every time we've What's said up? it's dumb. What number is Eric Fair? Sixty-six. I hope. Eric. Yeah. Please be number four. Oh, he's 16. Never mind. I thought he was number four for the Capitals. Eric I thought he was. Four. Eric Fur. Fur. <laughs> he's 16, which is four know. times four. So that's, oh. there you go. Oh. Um, I, I Listen, I, just, I respect the argument. I don't think, I just don't think it's, it's one that you could apply unless you're going to apply it to all those numbers, in which case it gets complicated and ridiculous, which is why we only have one number. And by the way, Mary Lemieux, even though he would never ask for this, if Mario Lemieux really wanted his number retired, and that's the guy you got to worry about. And Adam is anybody, knows him personally. Is anybody asking Mario Lemieux whether he's offended by it? Which, by the way, I can I almost know. guarantee that he's not. If Mario Lemieux wanted, Mario Lemieux can call up Gary Bettman as an owner and go, listen, can you can you retire my damn number? Again, like the, this is the Canucks complaining about Mason Raymond, except the Penguins have even less to complain about than that team did. <laughs> yeah. Like, guys, you're so... Awesome. Like, just enjoy Yeah, and also, enjoy you're going to win a cup this year! Just enjoy ah, it. Remember, I'm remember, so jealous of Penguins fans. <laughs> remember 2004? Remember 2003? Remember how crappy that was? Uh, Chill. Hey! What? One last point. Fun fact. Uh, Michael Jordan's jersey isn't officially retired league-wide, so you can totally wear it if you want to. And Jackie Robinson's number is the only one retired in Major League Baseball. So across the four major sports, all we have is Gretzky and Jackie Robinson. So anybody can kind of wear whatever the hell Come they want. Come on. It's a number. Yeah. By the way, if the Beatles were called the Big Fat Stupid Heads, mm. that would be, they would still have created the same songs. I think does that make, Jimmy, does after, that make sense? After Jimi Hendrix died, they should have retired the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you should have gotten rid of it. You shouldn't be allowed to play it anymore. You're not going to be as good as him. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a name. It's a number. It's not the defining factor. Um, Joe Thornton records his 1,000th assist for the San Jose Sarks. Congratulations to him. Not not top 100, though. Joe Thornton is not a top 100 player all time. He has 1,000 assists. And counting. And I, I didn't want to get into a debate about who made the, th- the, the 100, top 100, but here we are. <laughs> Malkin wasn't on the list either, I don't think, which I think is insane. That's insane. They had to issue a list during the 100th season. By the time Thornton retires, he'll be on that list. By the time Malkin retires, he'll be on that list. A bunch of current players would be on that list. There's a bunch of players whose names you probably don't even recognize on that list. Like, ah, whatever. List. Whatever. I think we're I think we're putting too much thought into it. Joe Thornton rules. As- most assists since start of 97-98 season. Joe Thornton, 1,000. Yarmir Yager, 775. Wow! He's so, 225 assists ahead yeah. of anyone else. After that's Henrik Sedin, 774, and then... Henrik Aginla. Sedin has 774 assists? Yep, since 97, 98. Good for him. Yeah. Wow. And then Aginla at 643. So, wow, that's a lot of assists. 225 assists is a lot. <laughs> wow. That's, that's two and a half seasons worth of points. Mm-hmm. More. Now, Yager, Yager did go to the KHL for a bit. Yeah. So there's an argument to be made. He could be closer. Uh, he wouldn't have gotten no. 200 I don't think so either. In those three seasons, no. I agree. Yeah, but, it, I mean, we just got to give it up to him. It's amazing. Got to give it up to him. 
Arguably the best playmaker of all time. Certainly. Somewhere. Well, okay. Pure playmaker because Gretzky. Somewhere, Sergey Samsonov's going, yeah, but I won the Calder. Yeah. So, yeah. so you didn't win that, Joe. Which is why the Calder doesn't matter. <laughs> um, Sens make a trade. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they trade. They got a former first round pick, Brandon uh, Gormley. Overall, Brandon Gormley. Yeah, he's yeah. been pinging around a lot. Yeah. Um, and they got it for future considerations, which is always a uh, an interesting thing because who the heck knows what that is? Yeah. Can you look up Gormley's contract? Now Gormley cannot play in the NHL this season now nope, because not true. He can play in the NHL. Playoffs. He cannot play in the playoffs. Uh yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, so I maybe am a bit out of the loop. Did someone on the Sens get hurt? Someone on their defense get hurt? What about Binghamton? Because Gormley, I believe, was in the A. Was he not? I don't know. I don't know. But point being, um, they still need to get to the playoffs. It looks like they're going to make it. They still need to get there. Gormley can help them get there. Mm-hmm. He is ineligible to help them, though, in any way. During the playoffs, mm-hmm. uh, his cap hit is six hundred and fifty thousand. When does his contract expire, and what will his contract status be? He is an RFA after this season. Hmm. There you go. So that's a move worth making. It helps you yeah. potentially make the playoffs this year, and you maintain his rights. He does not become a UFA, so this isn't a, a pure buy, so to speak. The Sens could keep him. Is trading somebody for future considerations essentially a waiver claim? Hmm. It's a bit of a handshake agreement. It's weird. I've seen I've seen instances where future considerations ended up being like not exercised. Mm-hmm. So you just gave a player away for nothing. And I've also seen it like turned into like a third or fourth round pick. Um so I don't know. Future considerations is very literally future considerations. I'm just confused as to how it works. Because there like, must be some sort of deal in place where there's conditional. Mm-hmm. There's gotta be, because otherwise at that mm. team can just go, hey, so pay me now. I want McDavid. And the other team goes, <laughs> oh, okay, well, here's the seventh round pick. Like, can that team then go, that's not good enough? No. I'm sure they've agreed on that before. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be like a, uh, a window. Mm-hmm. Or like no, a, just a contract that says, hey, if he does this, then we get this, right? Like, it would be. But wouldn't that, isn't that a conditional pick? Yeah. It would be a conditional but pick, there's or, too many or a conditional on it for it to be. I don't know. Man. I don't know, man. I I don't I don't get that What's one. Chris Johnson when you need him. Yeah, really. I know. <laughs> he'd probably have an exact answer yeah. on that one. I need I need his smoky, truthy voice and that beard, mm. that handsome beard. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just thought interesting to bring up. Sends make a trade. Send, yeah. uh, GM meetings quickly before yes. we go to the uh, press conference uh, the word is they want to fix video review what a surprise huh? A they they are talking about limiting it to three minutes if you can't get it in three minutes then the call on the ice stands uh, but specifically they want to change the offside ruling a lot of GMs are like I don't even care if the call's right you shouldn't be able to rewind that much there oh, has the- to be human error with the referees if you're going to ref a game by humans there will be human error what what has been annoying is the um, the call for is his foot on the ice or not. They need to make it just crossing the plane or something like that or both skates across the plane, something like that. Because that Matthews, I, or there was a goal, I don't remember who it was against, but there was an offside review. I think it was the car, no, you know what it was? It was the Ducks game. And did Matthews have his skate on the ice or not? Based on the video review, the call on the ice was obviously no offside. There wasn't enough evidence to overturn it. But if you ask me, do I think his foot was on the ice? No. So I think that goal was technically offside. But you couldn't prove it. And if it's that hard to prove, should you just change the rule? Just change the rule. Or just Make not easy. rewind it that far. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't this? get Take that. Take away video review entirely and give me continuous three-on-three overtime. If you're so worried, if you're so worried about games going too long, yoink, get rid of that. Give me continuous three on three. I will take that. Billy Stan hates a shootout. Shut up. Well, uh, they were also talking about uh, next year with the bye weeks because the PA wants to keep them. So the the proposal is that a conference, each conference will take their bye weeks at the same time. Great idea. That way you still got games, but they take them at separate times, one early, one late. Um, now I feel like, okay, that's fine. 
Um, but again, it's it's one of those things that like I, I don't understand what the bye week really gives you. I don't get it. It compresses the schedule. I mean, it's, it compresses it a little bit, not that much. But I five days. This five. Day, I mean, five days does a little bit, but really, you're missing a game, game and a half. I think this idea is neat, um, and could potentially help players recuperate and recover from injuries and stuff. I think you try it again with this new format, mm-hmm. and if you still decide it's not that great of an idea, okay, well then you scrap it. Uh, Lou Lamorello said he wants to get rid of the pity point in overtime. I'm starting to not be against that. They were talking about the three points. And by the way, if the Leafs got rid of the pity point, we are way out of the playoff picture. Oh, totally. Totally. And that's, I don't care. Yeah. That's I fine. I'm fine with it. You lost. As long as you get rid of the shootout. Get rid of the shootout first, and then we'll talk about the pity point. Yeah. Because now, winning the shootout would actually be more valuable yeah. if you do that. I am okay with getting rid of the pity point, with the caveat being... Get rid of the shootout. Get rid of it. Kill it with fire. Question. <laughs> yes. What? If both teams go to overtime and one team scores in overtime, do you get rid of the pity point? But if they both go to the shootout, then you give them a pity point? Uh, see what we're doing. The, <laughs> the easiest answer is the 3 2 1. Yeah. 3 2 1 makes a lot of sense. I kind of like just uncomplicating it. I think. If it, if I was running the NHL, it would be you get a win or you get a loss, and that's it. Like almost every other sport. Like a yeah. normal sport. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this overtime loss. Thing. Remember when it used to be like four or five was. different numbers? It was like win, yeah. loss, tie, overtime, overtime loss. loss. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it was overtime win. Yeah, yeah. it was dumb. Yeah. Now. I, I do kind of like the three two one format, but then you're saying definitively that an overtime win is worth less. It's not in the playoffs. No, you don't get to go to t- game eight. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I honestly, I'm with you too. I, I feel like every other league, you go to extra innings, it's a win or a loss. You, you go to game, o- overtime, and 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 by the way, that the NBA does continuous overtime. Yeah, yep. I think yeah, the NFL do does players, not. How do those players yeah, survive? How do they possibly survive? How do they not collapse and die? Like all NHL players would. They just collapse and collapse die. Collapse and die. Too long. <laughs> too physical. Yeah, too much. Yeah. No, nobody wants five more minutes of three on three. Ridiculous. No, they no. die. Isn't football the same way? Like, well, yeah, football, but there's only one two game a week. ties a year max. I know. So. But. You know, what if they die? Does he? And usually the ties are like brutal games. Yeah, it's, it's like bad teams. <laughs> <do> bad. <laughs> just, bad. <laughs> just like an exercise in frustration. Those games, yeah. like you don't want. If you're in a tie game, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Like here's here's the way I see it. If you do continuous three on three, okay, the majority of them, like eighty five percent of them, I think, at seventy five percent would be decided before the ten minute mark, mm-hmm. and then a couple would maybe go to fifteen. But if you get one or two of those freak games a year that go like a full period over, yeah, that's long. Who's turning the channel? Who's turning away from that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, these players, they... Also, those you know what, two guys? games a year are worth not having a shootout 82 times. I know. And, and supposedly, and I don't remember who told me this, but supposedly it was players who shot down the idea of... Uh, Continuous three on three, or no, 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 what was it? Four minutes of four on four, followed by three minutes of three on three. That would have been amazing. Which I think you should just do seven minutes of three on three because it seems obvious that it's easier to score three on three. Yeah. Um, but I think that's changing now. I think that's changing because players see how ridiculously fun it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Unless you lose the face off, and in which case you're never getting possession of the puck well, again. We've also seen yeah, I know. the thing where you go in the zone and you're like, ah, I don't really like it, and then you go back out and you take it and you redo oh, your entry. Kill off sides. <laughs> yeah. Kill them in general, especially for three on three. But, um, you know, I think the thought was, well, it's just such a breakneck pace. No. no. <laughs> what happens is the human body just goes, I can't do it anymore. And then you get something like what happened with Blake Wheeler against the Toronto Maple Leafs, where it's not. I think the thought was, oh, they're just going to be giving it. They're all out there. No, they're going to gas and stop, and the other team's going to score. 
Like it's it's gonna give. It's what yeah because these players start to skate like they have a cinder block tied to their yeah, waist. It's not gonna be this ridiculous twenty minute back and forth. <laughs> no, no, it's gonna end before ten minutes, and the shootout takes a while. Mm-hmm. I counted it. I mm-hmm. measured it out. One guy, I can't remember who it was against, uh, but I measured the time it took to do the three on three overtime. It's lo- the shootout's longer. The shootout is as long. And no, and the shootout, and that's if it if it's wrapped up in exactly. three shots. The shootout I yeah. measured was about as long as the three on three. I think it might have been slightly longer, uh, or sorry, the overtime might have been slightly longer. But this shootout, I think, only went five skaters. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can I also? I have a question. Don't you think it's dumb that the home team has to go first in the shootout? I think they decide. Do they? Whether or not they go first. I don't know about that. Because every time the Leafs are always go like when they when it's at home, I think the Leafs have to go first, and I think that's. I feel like it's almost always at home too. You don't want to go first in a shootout. You want to go second. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Just get rid it's of also it. dumb Tell how it. you can't repeat skaters once you reach. When you can't do it at all. Once wait, you wait. reach like five, you should be able to come. You back. can't repeat skaters. No, no, not but at they're all. gonna. They're they one used of the, to. One of the proposed rules is you can repeat after three now. Yeah, which you can do in international play. Yeah. Where that's where you oh she you can't repeat skaters. No, no. And my my initial no the only time you, you can uh, repeat Matt skaters taking shootouts. you can repeat skaters. You need to go through literally every skater yeah. on your roster. Once and you I finish. know this because I saw it once. I saw it in Mississauga. Uh, and by the way, that took like fifteen minutes. It took forever. Forever. So so you hold on. It was like you, another period of you hockey. don't want your superstars to take. Like honestly, oh, if you're the Penguins, stupid. if you're the Penguins, and, and, like if you're the NHL, do you not want Sidney Crosby? Let's say it's a it's a head to head, and it's Capitals and it's Penguins. Uh, Just Ovechkin and Crosby, shot after shot after. Shot. Tell me who doesn't want to see Adam, that? <laughs> why do you hate Magic? Like, don't you remember Merrick Malik twelve years ago? <laughs> Which they're still running in highlight reels, by the way. Enough. Enough. We get it. He was big. <laughs> yeah. We get it. He was big and nobody expected it. Whoa. But the 50th Whoa. time. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Again. <laughs> ah. I, I think people forget that in the YouTube generation, which is us. Replays aren't as exciting we anymore. Are. Sorry. Re- going back and rehashing that stuff is not as exciting because we have access to it. Yeah. I could go and see that. Uh, well, and so my initial uh, thought when they when I saw that they were looking at repeating skaters, I was like, "No, just get rid of the thing." And then I realized, "Oh, this is how it starts. Mm-hmm. You can never get someone to abandon their dumb idea right away. If you've ever worked on your group on a group project before, you know. You got to coddle them, get them to change their idea a little bit, and then eventually they figure out, "Oh, the shootout sucks." I think they're going to get rid of it. When? Jesus, so we can hear Joe yeah. blowing highlights in the highway, uh, in the hallway, that's behind crazy. these soundproof doors. Well, like, I don't know. Like, that's a good transition. To soundproof say. in those doors. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Congratulations on three thousand games, there, Mister Bowen. Holy Mac! You made three three thousand games. Thousand games? Oh, yeah, good for him. Cool. Wow. All right. Well, I guess it's time for the press conference. The presser. Oh, Stephen. Before hold on, before Jesse before Jesse gets into the f- first question, uh, they're definitely not picking that up. Are oh. you kidding with these mics? Are you kidding? If I go over here, the mic barely picks me up. Oh. Um, Jesse, uh, Jesse, you might have saw this in our uh, in our Facebook group, our little group chat. Steve, uh-huh. tell us how many listens the show had in 2016. So, not counting YouTube, um, on SoundCloud, we had in 2016. 2,989,000 listens. So we just uh, passed 2 million. Now, so I just thank want to take... so much. Thank Holy you. shit. Yeah. Thank you for that. That is an, that is an incredible number. And from, wow. From New Year's Day 2016 till now, we've had about half the listens we've ever had. Which is... Like, because we've been doing the show for almost four years. Yeah. In June, it'll be May four years. May 2013 is when we started. Oh, May, May 2013. Okay. May 2013. At the very end of May 2013. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, from New Year's Day 2016 till now, we've had about half the listens we've ever had. In 2017, we already have had about 400 and... We've had about 420K. LOL. Wow. 69. LOL. The, well... <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. 420,000, and it's March 7th. 
it's nuts. What, Adam? Um, first question. I love that you both went nice. nice. Anyway, have, we just want to say thank you to the listeners. We love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have not seen your most recent LFR. Okay. But there is a question here. If I can find it. I'm trying to remember what I said in my most recent LFR. Actually, let's go to this one first. No, okay. no, let's ask that. Right. All right, Steve. On a scale from Vancouver to England, how wet was the fart you ripped in the last LFR? Is that a specific reference? Did you rip a fart? Did you rip a fart in your LFR? No. Why? What? That's an interesting. Maybe thing. they heard. Maybe there was like a. Maybe I scooted on my ball because I I have that blue yoga ball. Oh that I yeah. Hmm. I don't think I. Sc- Ripped a fart. Okay, so... I'm usually pretty conscious about my farts. I'm also conscious about boogers. Confirm, no fart was ripped in the last LFR. Confirm, no fart. Okay. Second question. Do you ever see yourself going behind the bench and coaching a major junior team? Uh, a maybe a junior league team. No. The, no. no? I'm not... Smart Being a coach? Yeah. Adam, no. would you ever coach like your kid's team? Hell yeah. Absolutely. My dad did. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm going to leave that to the What pros. do you mean no? You wouldn't do that? You wouldn't coach Little League? Dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you could coach a little team. I don't know. They just run around the I'll ice. Help my if kid. our kids are not playing on the same hockey team, I'm going to be upset. They're going to, but I'm not coaching them. Well, I, I will. Adam will be the all, all head coach. Yeah, that makes way more you can be an assistant coach. assistant coach. Yeah, and I'll learn from you. And when you get fired, I'll take over. <laughs> That's a great thing about House League. You can be bad and not get fired. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. We'll just be bad together. Yeah, it'll be great. No, man. I, I can't wait for those days, actually, because then we'll be coming on the podcast, patting ourselves on the back <laughs> for how great our, our five-year-olds are doing. <laughs> Should you do LFRs on your on five-year-old's your kids. team? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No more Dunkaroos! <laughs> we're going to be playing like that! What do you mean it was 20 to 2? Because that's what it is. <laughs> I'm ashamed you have half of my jeans! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a final question. Is oh, Neapolitan ice cream one flavor or three separate flavors? It's three separate flavors. It's three separate flavors. It's four flavors. Oh. <gasps> Strawberry, is, vanilla, s- chocolate, and, and Neapolitan. Neapolitan. That's my argument. Fuck, that's decent. It, I, it isn't, though, every spoonful, because you have to have all... That's th- not... For Neapolitan to exist, it's like for the number four to exist, you have to have one, two, and three, right? So for Neapolitan... No, you can have two and two. Okay, fine. <laughs> but that's the point, is that you you have to have... If you only get chocolate and vanilla, then it's just chocolate and vanilla. Yeah. You know what? Chocolate ice cream is not my favorite, but just the thought of Neapolitan ice cream right now... Mixing all those flavors together. Are you a mixer or a separate eater? Uh, you know what happens is I pick at the strawberry, and I pick at the vanilla, and then I realize, okay, now there's a disproportionate amount of chocolate. I need to start mixing. See, if you're a mixer, then it's Neapolitan. But if you eat separately, then it's separate. Uh, no, no. Also, I don't know if I'm having. So I had the. Uh, I grew up on the Chapman's Neapolitan. The same. Not my favorite. But, well, okay, when you mix them, it's good. But the Chapman's chocolate is not as good as other brands' chocolates. Other brands' chocolates are a little bit sweeter, and I like them more. Mm -hmm. So, oh, man, I'm so rocking an ice cream in the I also want to shout out everybody that has tried PC white cheddar mac and cheese recently. And all of our American listeners, a lot of people are like, oh, my God, you've ruined me for mac and cheese. Because it is the best. It is the best. Um, The other thing I want to throw out there. And this was asked by a listener on Twitter, and I forget who it is, so forgive me for not knowing your name right now, because of course I can't keep track. Is spaghetti salad? It's no. It's pasta. It's pasta. What are you but it's about? A, so a salad, because you can have tuna salad, right? Is without tuna. Oh. Is sorry. Sandwich a salad? No, no, you can have tuna salad without lettuce. Shit. You can have tuna salad without lettuce. Is chili salad? Is chili salad? Fuck that. It's soup that's salad. Not, it's soup liquid salad. That's what not the fuck is this? Just a thought. I'm, I'm not willing to thought. consider that. It's soup pasta. I, it's pasta yeah. soup. <laughs> no, it's, there's already a thing for spaghetti. What is the pasta? pasta? What does the sauce to noodle ratio have to be to make it soup? 
I want to know. I need to know. Uh, um, shout out Ole Jokinen, who took our prize of the one-day contract from the Florida Panthers. Deservedly so. He's a season ticket holder, and he renewed his season tickets, and they offered him a contract. Is that what actually would happen, or no? No. no they they decided him to one day. day. Leaf great Ole Jokinen. Yeah, for like eight games. That was weird. That was weird. Those are dark, dark days. He's My God. Better than Leaf great Martin Skula. <laughs> and Leaf great Eric Brewer. Leaf great Eric Brewer. Who else got flipped? I think the show's done. Leaf great Martin Gerber. I think, Gerber. I think, I think you it should wrap it done. up. Yeah, I guess we should wrap it up. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and get me on the highway. We'll be back Thursday. <laughs> that was a fun show. It, it was, was good. It was good to not be cut off. I, time. Can I be honest with you? Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the Penguins fallout. I feel like we're gonna get it. I feel like I'm gonna get it. The Penguins. Yeah, the no, Mary Lemieux no, no, no. stuff. We're, we're gonna get it from the Oilers. You think so? Oh, yeah. We should we should end each episode with who which fan base are we gonna hear from the most? The Canucks, because you just randomly threw a dart at them for no good reason. Well, <laughs> no good Show's reason. Over, boys. And because they're sensitive babies, <laughs> <laughs> all of them indiscriminately paint you with one brush. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.